morning. It's always a joy to be here and a joy to share. Uh, who is substituting substitution for the real pastor, but uh, it's nice when he's not here to be able to be, help a little bit and fill in. And it's just a joy to uh, share God's word with you this morning. I say every time I speak because it's, uh, it'll help me later on. You know, I, I love children. I love lots of children. I love everyone, love everyone who have lots of children. Uh, we take care of children in different places. And uh, I don't know if there's children here or not still in the service, but if your children can... Uh, are in competition with me, then just take them out of the back uh, and uh, that'll be fine. Uh, we're going to read God's Word together and we're going to read a few verses from the book of Isaiah and chapter 40. The book of Isaiah and chapter 40. <coughs> What's this thing here? All right, we're going to read chapter 40, we're reading from verse 25 through verse 31 of Isaiah chapter 40. And here's what it says, you're hearing me all right, I need to check that as well, because uh, whenever hearing it in, uh, I sound very loud in my own ear, but uh, you, uh, I need to understand that you're hearing me too, all right? All right, pretty to back there, you can hear me? Fine. Verse 25, to whom will you compare me, or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes and look to the heavens. Who created these things? He who brings out the starry host one by one and calls them each by name. Because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. Why do you say, O Lord, and complain, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord? My cause is disregarded by my God. Do you not know, have you not heard, that the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth? He'll not grow tired or weary. And his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary, and increases is the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary. Young men stumble and fall. And those who hope in the Lord, but those who hope in the Lord, or I'm using the older fashioned version now, those who wait upon the Lord, those who wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They'll run and not grow weary. They'll walk and not be faint. Not all the new translations change the word into hope or trust. Uh, in fact, some of the new ones revert to the word wait. And I want to speak this morning on waiting upon God. Because uh, if waiting upon God, by waiting upon God, we can renew our strength and mount up in wings like eagles and run and not be weary, not faint, well, then that's something we need to all learn a little bit more about. Father, as we look into your word this morning, we just pray for your help. And ask, Father, for your blessing. Lord, as we share your word, Father, we just pray that your Holy Spirit will apply that word to all of our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. We live in days of instant everything, don't we? Quick things, everything goes fast. Instant food. You are on a journey, you don't go seek out a restaurant and go and be served by a waitress and, you know, take a long time over it. You rush into McDonald's and in five minutes, You've uh, swallowed a hamburger and you go on. Or you go to some other fast food joint. Uh, uh, it's the thing that you do. We, we live in that kind of age, don't we? Everything is instant. We don't want to wait. We want information. We go into our computers. We don't read books anymore or, or don't read books so much anymore. We can just uh, Google something in Wikipedia and we get all the information, information we want just at the press of a button. Not true? I do it myself. Uh, uh, we, we've, we've instant transportation. We want to go uh, places as quick as we can. When we first left this country to go another one, we traveled by boat and it took us two weeks to get there. We came back home in uh, something like uh, eight hours. I mean, we're, we're going everything faster. Nobody's taking the time. And that's true, of course, of almost of relationships. True of clothing. I remember in the village I come from, there was a fellow called the tailor. And if you wanted a suit, you went to the tailor and he, 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 he sort of he made you a suit. Uh, at least we were just in that stage where uh, things were getting ready-made suits as well. But you don't do that anymore. Go to a shop, you try something, it's made already for it. Everything is instant. No one wants to wait. Everything wants everything in a hurry. Speed is king. And we've no time to wait for anybody or everything. 
We are controlled by time. We maximize it in this world of rush and we sell them. And it's true, I think, we sell them of time to wait upon God. And yet the Word of God clearly says that we should wait upon God. We're going to renew our strength. We're going to be strong in the Lord. We're going to do things for God. Then we need to understand what this text says. We should wait upon God. We uh, know that with God there's no time, but we're in a, in a period that God has created where we're controlled by time. And we understand that. We look forward to eternity when there will not be a succession of endless days, but there'll be no more time. For there's no more sun and no more moon to measure it by. And that's, of course, a way in the future. I want to say just two or three things this morning. I want, first of all, to mention for those people who don't know Jesus as their own Savior that God, God is waiting for you. And then I want to, uh, to talk about those people who uh, have got into uh, either a rut or into whatever you like to call it. And, uh, you know, they're, they're there, but they're not waiting upon God. They're settled down. They're not listening to what God says. Then I want to talk to those kind of people who don't have time to listen to what God says. They're always rushing on, have little patience for this or that or the other thing. And if I use personal experiences for those things, please excuse me. It's the only kind of experiences I have, uh, the ones that uh, refer to myself. Uh, and then I want, of course, to find out what this verse means, waiting upon God. God is waiting for the unsaved to turn to him. In the days of Noah, God gave the people 120 years to witness his righteousness and said the days of man will be 120 years. And for that length of time, I guess, Noah was, Noah was building an ark and people could see him laying the keel and putting the timbers in and then putting everything else in. 120 years is a long time for a man and his family and a few helpers to be building a big boat. It was a rather big boat. But it was just a picture of how long-suffering God is. God was waiting for people, waiting for people to turn, waiting for people to repent, waiting for people to change. Lord of God says that he's long-suffering and wills not the death of any, Romans 2 and 4. Do you despise his kindness and tolerance and long-suffering? But let me tell you something. God will not wait forever. And if you're in this meeting this morning and uh, You've understood what the gospel is. You can't come in here without hearing the gospel Sunday by Sunday. But it's preached every Sunday. You understand God's plan of salvation. Now God has offered it to you. He's given it to you. He's explained it to you. You've had it preached. You've seen it, you've seen it a, a witnessed to and testified to. But I want to tell you something else. God will not wait forever. Now is the day of God's salvation. And if you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your own Savior, let me tell you, we have a long-suffering God, but there will come a day when He will suffer. His long-suffering will come to an end. There will come a day when uh, it will be for you ended. I uh, had a guy this week, uh, he didn't say this directly to me, but he was inquiring about salvation. And he said, well, you know, what's all this about getting saved? And he said, well, well what I think I should do is that I should just stay, uh, you know, I'll put it off. I'll put it off maybe till the end of my life and then I'll get saved. Well, you know, do what I want and then I'll live my, live my life as I want <clears throat> and then I'll get saved. Then I'll become a child of God. I want to tell you, friends, that uh, you may come to the end of the life and God, your life and God's spirit will stop striving with you. What of God clearly says uh, that when God's time of waiting is over as far as you're concerned, it will no longer be possible to accept the Lord Jesus Christ. For without the work of the Holy Spirit in your heart, you never will. We used to sing a hymn long ago. I, I couldn't find it. It's not even in the blue book. It's the, it's the one before then. It's something like, Long, long has he waited in vain. Your soul may be drifting over the deadline at last. And it was just a, an appeal to those people who heard the message of God and hadn't responded to it. So let me say to you this morning, at the very outset of what I want to share, let me say that God is long-suffering God does not will the death of any. But if you continually spurn God's offer of mercy, you know, God's offer of mercy won't, uh, won't indefinitely be presented and offered to you. There may come a time when you find it's too late for you. And I pray that uh, that time will not, will not be, as far as any of you are concerned here, 
I remember years ago visiting an old man in hospital and all he could talk about was the opportunities he had in life and the opportunities he'd missed. And I tried to speak to him about salvation, but it was too late. It was too late. He couldn't, his mind was beyond grasping it. So there will come a time if you not accept the Lord now when the God's Spirit may not offer you the same salvation. Let me share that at the very outset. <clears throat> and I always say that if there are those of the those here who have not accepted Jesus, please stay behind afterwards and we'll try to help you as much as we can. Now, uh, the, the first lot of people the, uh, that I want to mention about this morning are those who, wait up, who don't wait upon God long enough to hear His voice to move on. They're stuck in one place. They don't want to move. They're there. And, uh, you know, there's, uh, there's no question of them doing anything. They're beyond the place of God really speaking anymore to them. They're in a rut. They're not going to move on. <coughs> uh, when the children of Israel came up to, uh, uh, came up to Mount Horeb after they'd been journeying for a year, do you know what the Lord said to them? You've stayed here long enough at this mountain. Break camp and advance into the hill country of the Amorites. And, of course, you know the story. Uh, after years when they sent up the spies, they came back the false report, and they didn't go in. God encouraged them. They said, you've been here long enough. You've been traveling for a year. Go. Get your possession. I, I promise it to you. <clears throat> well, you know what happened. The spies went, and they rejected the message of the spies. <coughs> Excuse me. And they turned back in for 40 years. They wandered in the wilderness. Until they came back again to the land of, uh, near the land of Canaan and Mount Seir. And the Lord said to them again in a different context. This time to different people. They were the children of those who refused to go in. And here's what God said. The Lord said, you have made your way around this hill country long enough. Now turn north. Give the people these orders. You're about to pass through the territory of your brothers the descendants of Esau who live in Seir, they'll be afraid of you, so be very careful. So what God is uh, virtually saying to the people in these two uh, verses is, you know, you've been in one place long enough. Go on, move on, do things. Occupy the possession, the inheritance that God has promised for you. Uh, uh, the same writer in the book of Deuteronomy gives a, a lovely picture he says here, like an eagle that stirs up its nest and hovers over its young and spreads its wings to catch them and carries them on his pinions, the Lord alone led him and no foreign god was with him. What he basically is saying, giving an illustration from the eagle, there comes a time when God wants you to move on. Now there's a, a bunch of people who don't want to move on and they're either the spiritual experience or what they do for God. I understand that when an eagle has prepared a nest for a young it lines it with all kinds of nice, furry, fluffy stuff. Uh, and for days, weeks, I don't know how long, uh, mother and father eagle come and they bring, they bring food for the, for the young uh, eaglet. And the thing grows up and the thing's happy. This young eaglet says, this is great. I sit in this nice, comfy rest. All I get, all I get is food and it, it's wonderful. Uh, we have the, 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 a saying in the, in the northeast, it's just a question of, Fell in first being, but no one understands what it is. It just means you, you, you sit uh, and everything comes to you. You don't have any effort. It's like a, a young child growing up. But there comes a time in the life of the eaglet when the, 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 the mother eagle says, Hey, this chick has got to move. And so it stirs up its nest. It pulls away all the fluffy stuff, all the soft stuff, uh, and makes it uncomfortable for the eaglet. I saw I'm not a... a, a, a uh, a nature uh, expert, but I understand as has happened that this eagle is a eaglet when it's growing up is eventually pushed out of its nest because it's an uncomfortable place to be. For there's no point of staying there, you'll never fly like an eagle in a nest. And so the eagle stirs up its nest, and the young, of course, are taught to fly. And that's true for many of us. And if I, if I can use uh, and myself as, a, an, as an example of, a, of this kind of thing and, and both types of people I will use my own life as an experience partly because that's from a different age but after I had be <coughs> been a, very, a long time in Fraserburgh, 16 years and uh, ministering to a congregation I guess about the size 
I, I, I wasn't for moving. There's no way I'm moving. I, I mean, I've come home. My family are here. You know, my friends are here. I've got a nice house. I, I love the folks. I love the church. We're doing fine. And, uh, you know, I, 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 didn't, uh, I didn't feel that. I, I'd even gone as far as, uh, you know, well, now I've got, I've got a layer. You know what a layer is? Who knows what a layer is, huh? What's a layer? Do you know what a layer is? A place we've got to be buried in. Huh? I've got a lair in the village cemetery. I don't want to be burned at the end of my life. I, I, plan, I plan to be there. And so there's no way I'm moving away. <clears throat> I'm settled. I'm happy. I'm not for moving. But, you know, God wants me to move. He's not getting through to me. So he has to get through to my wife. And that's another story. <clears throat> And uh, she was the reason for my leaving. <laughs> we need to keep on moving and hearing the voice of God. We need to understand what, uh, when we talk of moving on, we're not talking in the spirit of division. I heard so many people saying, well, I'm moving on. Usually when they say that, they're changing church. You know, <laughs> I'm moving on. I'm not talking about that kind of stuff. You know, it's... Uh, uh, it's, it's so easy, to, but it's so easy to get into a spiritual rut, isn't it? Now, at, at, at my age, I don't like change. I don't like change. I'm comfortable with things. You know, I don't like when they sing every now new songs. You know, a new body says, I've got a new song. I oh, thought, no, no, you won't. <laughs> but they turn out very often to be good songs. Huh? But, but it's just my nature, like, I just don't like change. I'm comfortable. I like the rut I'm in, huh? I think it's a groove, it's not a rut, but anyway, it's, <laughs> I, I don't like, but it's so easy, it's so easy when you get to a certain age in life, so maybe, maybe I'm talking to those over 40, huh? I don't know, for the first group of people, well, you like where you're at, and you don't want to move, you, you're happy, you don't want to listen to God saying, do this or do that, I'm not talking about people going into ministry, that kind of stuff, I'm talking about serving God. And you know, we're still so much talk these days about leadership and leader. We need to understand about discipleship. <clears throat> what we're following God. What we're understanding what God's plan is for our life. And I want to say, I want to say that there's a, there's a need for us sometimes to keep fresh and to keep moving on in God. I remember two years ago, there about, uh, reading my Bible, not this one, but my big Bible that I read every day, and uh, saying, I, I now have lots of, lots of marks in my Bible, of dates, you know, certain dates that things happen, and I felt that God spoke to me, uh, and so I, needed, I needed some encouragement, whatever it was. I've lots of, a couple of years ago, I noticed, hey, I haven't been writing any dates in my Bible recently. Yeah. I thought, well, why not? Well, uh, has God stopped speaking to me? Maybe I didn't want to listen. Maybe uh, I was comfortable. Maybe, I, you know all kinds of reasons. But in the past couple of years, since I've had some kind of a medical condition, I have lots of entries in my Bible. <laughs> because I've been claiming lots of promises and hearing God saying lots of different things. Because, uh, you know, if we're, if we're looking to be led by God, we're wanting to hear His Word, to hear what He's got to say to us. And I, I want to tell you something we need to be hearing God's word. And if we're not hearing God's word, there's something wrong with our walk with God. Something wrong with my walk with God. So I want to say, first of all, to those people that you need to wait upon God. You need to listen to God's word. And not get into a place where you say, well, I'm happy, I'm comfortable, I'm being taken to heaven in a bed of ease. In some magic carpet of salvation. Oh. It's living a life for Christ, and that life should never change. That life should keep on changing, keep on developing, and keep on growing. So there's the first group of people who don't wait in God enough to hear his voice to move on because they're happy with what they are and what they're doing, and they're not wanting anything more than what they've got. Now there's another lot of people. And they're the kind of people who don't wait in God enough to hear his voice for the rushing around all the time. And they're, you know, they're, they're, they're impatient. They're, they're not sitting down. They're not spending enough time with God. Now, they're not like the previous group who might be a little bit older. 
maybe this is the younger group and they're, uh, they're, they're, they're not uh, staying still enough. Now the word of God in Galatians 5.22 says that the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. And one, of course, I haven't mentioned is patience. And I think as God's children, we need to be aware that we need to listen to God and stop rushing around endlessly so much. Or uh, listen to God's word and say, God, I, I'm open to what you, you want me to do. God said to Abram, I'll give you a son. He didn't say when, but he said, I'll give you a son. And it'll be a son through Sarah. <clears throat> and through the son, I'm going to bless the world. Through the son, I'm going to show my salvation and all the other wonderful promises. And Abram waited, and he waited, and he waited. He was comparatively young as far as the, his age was in those days. He, he, he wasn't a young man, obviously. But he uh, it could wait in the long so let, let's help God a little bit so he and Sarah went into a pact and said let's rush things up God seems to have forgotten God see, God hadn't forgotten at all he was only testing Abram I guess <coughs> and Abram couldn't wait he couldn't wait long enough and says well, he, 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 uh, he uh, took Hagar and he had a, he had a son called Ishmael why didn't he rule regret uh, having a son Ishmael and, and all the problems it caused him and everyone else he, he wasn't willing to wait upon God. He wanted to rush on. God said, wait. Saul was about to fight a battle. Uh, he'd already won a wonderful victory, and he's going to fight another battle. <coughs> and Samuel says, I'll come, I'll come with you. The, you know, the, the, the fighting against, I forget which lot they were fighting against. But they're, they're all uh, lined up there. The army was all gathered up there. So Samuel had obviously said, uh, I'll come in seven days' time. But Saul, uh, it, when some of his army started uh, packing the bags and going home, Saul said, you know, I have time. I can't wait anymore. I, I can't wait. I, 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 I'll, I'll offer the sacrifice myself. It was only six and a half days. Still maybe seven or eight hours to come. And he offers a sacrifice, which he wasn't authorized to do, which he shouldn't have done. <coughs> offering sacrifices, of course, was the job of, of Samuel, of the priest, of the prophet. And he no sooner offered the sacrifice, which he shouldn't have done. It was against the command of God. And Samuel appeared. So very glibly said, oh, well, you know, I did wait for you, but you didn't turn up. But you didn't wait long enough. He rushed things ahead. And that resulted in his dynasty finishing. Absalom couldn't wait to be king. So he tried to subvert the people of the kingdom. And he tried to get the place uh, of David, his father. You know what happened to Absalom. There are those people who don't wait long enough in the presence of God to hear what God's saying for them on to some new project before they've, in their own lives before they've finished the other one. There's no stickability, there's no loyalty, there's no, there's no continuance in what they're doing. They don't wait to hear the word of God. Now I, I, I confess, this is where I, <coughs> if, I was in, uh, if I was in Fraserburgh many years ago, you know, not wanting to move, being stuck in a rut, I, I'm afraid that's not been my, that's not my nature, from, my, my nature generally is to, uh, is to uh, uh, just rush here or there and rush about and don't have any patience, as, uh, as my wife would certainly testify. I, uh, we went out to uh, <coughs> take a memorial service of a fellow in Afghanistan last year, just about a year ago, who spent, I guess, 30 odd years in that part of the world, 35 years. And one of his great attributes was he used to be able to sit and drink tea and talk with Afghans and Pakistanis before, Afghans in particular, uh, and just sit for an hour, two hours, three hours, maybe an end, and listen to them and counsel them. I could never do that. I tried, you know. I would lose patience. I, well, I just didn't, that's just, a, uh, I guess it's one, of my, it's one of my problems, you know, that I rush here and I, I didn't have patience to wait and do the things that I should do. <coughs> <coughs> I, I, I had determined to wait. Uh, uh, go to the mission field as a single guy like that was uh, uh, 
I thought, yes, that's a good, far better than that to be trammeled with the wife and family and all the rest of it. But then, just a little while before I'd made definite plans to go, of course, I'd met, met my wife, and I thought, that's wonderful. And I found that she was going to the same place as me. So that was great. Uh, so then when I met her, after I met her a little while, I hadn't been a long time with her because she was in England and I was in Ireland. And, uh, well, you know, I said to her, well, 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 you know, we're going the same way. We love each other. And I'd fallen head, head over heels. There's no question of that. And I uh, said, uh, you know, will you marry me? And you know, she said, no. <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't figure that out. But she didn't say, no, ask me again later on. I hardly know you. Well, I think she's right. Oh, really patience. After getting married, we came back, in, back to Ireland. We, we, we'd gone to a, a little Bible college for a little while, and we came back to Ireland, and uh, I had to stay for, I'd land up there for a couple of years. But I came to a place, and uh, uh, you know, I'd finished all the local work I could do, and I didn't have a job. Now, I'm talking about the days when jobs were, you could easily get a job, but in Ireland it was a bit more difficult, and I had to go and sign the, the brew, the, you know, the Bureau of Brew, the unemployment exchange. No, I thought it was so embarrassing. You know, here's a young, healthy man saying, trying to get unemployment benefit. I mean, my culture and upbringing was every man should work and earn his own living. And that's a scriptural concept. Yeah. We need to work. And I say that without any apology, that I believe it's God's will for all of us to work. But I said, Very, I'm not going to back that sign in the unemployment place again. I'm going to England to get a job. And she was wringing her hands. She just had a baby. We'd just got in the house. And she said, what can I do with this fella who won't sit down for a minute and, and, you know, until the Lord provides a job? But that's, uh, I guess that's basically my nature. Uh, but it uh, just illustrates how easy it is, isn't it, to, uh, to rush about and that wait upon God. Some people rush from church to church, from job to job, from loyalty to loyalty. And I, I, I think what those people, what all of us need to do is to learn to wait upon God and get God to speak to us. God to speak to us. <coughs> oh, many times now you need to discern the word of God and where it's coming from. I, I've seen so many times people getting words from God or, or receiving words from other people and they've just been way, 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 way out and haven't worked out number seven. Seven young people drove two vehicles and they're going to drive them from Europe over to Bangladesh and hand them over to missionaries there. But no, they, you know, they haven't taken the, the, the time to check and see if they could get through India without a, a carney. A carney is a, is, is a visa for a car. So, of course, when they drove the thing out, they, they came to bother the Indian, the guys in India say, I'm the car, and you're getting in here with your car. And they came back <coughs> to Kabul, where we're living. They were dejected. They said, you know, we just wanted to right, do things. But if they'd simply waited upon God and taken advice from other people and done the kind of things they should have done, they wouldn't have received the problems that they did. And I want to say, folks, there are two groups of people, and maybe you're in one of them here this morning, well, some of you may be just sitting and you don't want to move. You don't want to move on with God. You're comfortable and happy with what you're doing. Well, maybe you need to wait upon God and listen to the voice of God. <laughs> Other, you, those of you who are going from experience to experience and job to job or, or thing to, whatever it is, and you need to understand as well that you need to wait upon God. But our text would apply to the third lot of people, who, those who wait upon the Lord. They will run and not be weary. They will mount up with wings as eagles. The psalmist in Psalm 119, verse 97 says, I, I love your law and I meditate on it. I meditate on it day and night. This doesn't mean that, you know, you've got to go into some kind of seclusion and, uh, and go to a monastery and just sit and wait day in, day out upon God. As many, as many perhaps monks have done in, in a bygone generation. I don't mean that kind of seclusion. But we live in a pressurized world. And we live in a, in, in, in a time bubble where we're, we're all feeling under pressure. In. But I want to say, folks, if we want to move on with God in any way, we need to learn to wait upon God. And I want to ask you, how do we wait upon God? We claim that we uh, listen to his voice when we pray. 
but sometimes we're so busy asking, we've very little time to listen. And we listen to his voice when we read his word. Or is it just a quick read, you know, where you've got to...